Jose Mourinho's second season at Real Madrid began with a different tone in the transfer market. Fullback Fabio Contrao was signed for over 30 million euros, and a further 25 million euros was spent on Nuri Sain, Rafael Varane, and Jose Callan. Hamid Altentop moved from Bayern Munich on a free. But none of those players would prove decisive that year, not in a good way at least, and pre season was hardly tranquil either. Mourinho grumbled through a summer tour of California, taking issue with the facilities, and also had a protracted falling out with Lasana Diara. On Real's return to Spain, they also lost the two-legged Super Cup to Barcelona, losing 5-4. The tie was actually a classic, but it would be remembered for an ugly brawl in the second game, the low point of which was Mourinho poking Guardiola's assistant Tito Villanova in the eye. Many years later, Mourinho would reflect on the incident, describing his regret. If I could, this would be one of the things I would never repeat, he told the author Joao Gabriel in 2021. Before that, I'd been winning, winning and winning. I got into this state that if I wasn't winning, it seemed like the end of the world to me. But at the time, the incident perfectly described how toxic the rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid had become, with Mourinho the central protagonist. And yet, with dressing room politics raging throughout the season and Mourinho's famed constructive tension dialed up to 11, Real were often magnificent in 2011-12. Yes, they would miss out on the Champions League again, losing a semi-final penalty shootout to Bayern Munich, and they'd be eliminated from the Copa del Rey by, of course, Barcelona. But they'd win La Liga by nine points, break the 100-point mark, and score the most goals in a league season in their history. And the quality of some of them was extraordinary. Gonzalo Higuain's rusping volley into the top corner against Espanyol, for instance. Or either of Ronaldo's thunderous long-range drives against Sevilla and Levante. But the real marvel was the construction of the goals and the combinations between the players. Whatever Mourinho's reputation for pragmatism, it was football of the highest quality. The centrepiece of which was one of the finest counter-attacks the game has ever seen. A facet of the Portuguese's coaching which has often been misunderstood. Mourinho always coached a highly structured system without the ball and during his time at Real could be accused of overloading attacking players with defensive instruction or fixating on his high-pressure triangle concept in midfield. But once possession was regained, he was happy to defer to players' instincts. The ball had to move forward and quickly, in as few passes as possible and often out wide as first port of call. But the patterns of moves were dictated by the players themselves. And the results could be glorious, like the beautiful flowing move that saw Ronaldo score against Ajax in the Champions League group stage. Domestically, it was a championship built on lightning-quick vertical football, which perfectly utilised Real's abilities as a side. Ronaldo scored 46 goals in the league alone. Higuain and Benzema managed a further 43 combined. Real collectively scored a ridiculous 121 times and produced a league season which, a home loss to Barcelona and another curious away defeat to Levante aside, was near to perfect. Fittingly, the title was virtually guaranteed at Camp Nou, and a 2-1 win was sealed when Meza Ozil played Cristiano Ronaldo behind the home defence with one of the passes of the season, and Real's talisman finished beyond Victor Valdez. By the beginning of the 2012-13 season, Pep Guardiola was gone, and Mourinho and Madrid were without a nemesis. That did little to ease the tension, though. They would win the Spanish Super Cup, beating Tito Villanova's Barca, but would then take just four points from their first four games, culminating in a loss to Sevilla, after which Mourinho attacked his players in front of the media, criticising their concession at a set-piece. Madrid's form would mean that the title race was practically over by Christmas. They would lose to Malaga, draw poorly with Espanyol at home, and fall to a 1-0 defeat to Betis. After that game, an insipid effort at the Benito Villamarín, opposing coach Pepe Mel gave a damning verdict of Madrid's attacking structures and inability to create against a low block. We tried to make sure Madrid had the ball, Mel told the media, because that way they harmed themselves. There were issues at the top of the pitch too, and question marks over Cristiano Ronaldo's future. Ronaldo had not been Florentino Perez's signing. Ramon Calderon had negotiated and agreed his transfer with Manchester United, and the relationship between them wasn't without its difficulties. When Ronaldo attended the European Footballer of the Year award in August 2012, Perez did not accompany him. He would finish equal second in the voting, tied with Lionel Messi, 
And while he lost out to Andres Iniesta, particularly galling to Ronaldo was the fact that Juan Laporta had accompanied his club's players to Monte Carlo and that his own president had not. It could be that I'm a bit sad, Ronaldo replied, when asked about his muted goal celebrations that season. The people in the club know why, he added, cryptically, and transfer stories would swirl around him for the rest of the season. Lingering issues were certainly a theme of that year. Fabio Contral's game time was a continual source of contention. So too was the team's defensive line and their approach in big games. Mourinho's relationship with some of the highest profile players at the club was also strained. Ahead of a home tie with Manchester City in the Champions League group stages, Sergio Ramos would be dropped. Later in the season, with the Madrid media muttering about black sheep in the dressing room, Ikai Casillas would suffer the same fate and would see first Aidan and then Diego Lopez picked ahead of him. And yet the Champions League might have provided a dramatic end to what would prove Mourinho's final season. Manchester United were beaten in the round of 16, Galatasaray were defeated despite a second leg loss in Istanbul, and Real were paired with Jurgen Klopp's Borussia Dortmund in the semi-final. The first leg at Westfal Stadion effectively settled the tie. Casillas and Benzema were left on the bench. Ramos played in what had become his less favoured and less influential right-back role, and Robert Lewandowski took advantage of Madrid's deep line to score four times. Mourinho's side would win the second leg 2-0, but they were out. His third attempt to capture La Decima had ended, again at the semi-final stage. Less than a month later, the final hope of silverware was gone too, as Madrid allowed a one-goal lead to slip in the final of the Copa del Rey, losing 2-1 to Atletico in extra time after seeing Cristiano Ronaldo sent off for two yellow cards and Mourinho again sent to the stands for dissent. The ending had long since been inevitable. Famously, however, Mourinho's next step was not to Manchester United, as had been assumed with David Moyes succeeding Alex Ferguson instead. Rather, it would be a return to Chelsea and a reconciliation with Roman Abramovich. At Madrid, he left a conflicting legacy. A couple of years later, having won the Premier League again with Chelsea in 2015, he himself reflected on his time at Real Madrid, saying that to win the title in Spain with 100 points against the best Barcelona ever was a big achievement and I enjoyed so much. And he was right, of course, because it certainly was an achievement. But whether he or anyone else really enjoyed it, is another matter entirely. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is where the Ralph Rangnick to Manchester United story broke, where a team of journalists have provided unrivaled coverage of Newcastle United's new ownership and where dedicated writers cover every Premier League team no matter their place in the table. And you can try it free now for 30 days.